All right, guys, today's lesson, we're going to go over collar and sleeve guard, and I'm going to show you some variances that's going to help make your collar and sleeve way more effective. Get right to it. So let's imagine I'm in closed guard. If I want to get to collar and sleeve against a kneeling opponent, it's going to be different than a standing opponent. If I want to play here, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's hard to get my collar and sleeve and get my far knee in and get my foot here. That requires my partner to let me do a lot, which is unlikely. If you're looking for a way to get there, here's just kind of a, a thought. I will go to spider guard. As I get to spider guard, this is much more control. I extend and let go of this grip. And now I'm here and I can play collar and sleeve. But today what we're going to look on is my partner starts standing up. I'm going to make sure I get my collar deep and my sleeve before they go. But when they stand up, sometimes they jump, but usually they're going to stand one foot or the other. And it's usually going to be the opposite side to the collar. So half the left foot. So when he stands up, boom, right here. If he keeps going and I don't do anything, go all up, now I'm behind. Usually this grip becomes weak, and now I'm behind, boom, he starts passing. When we come back down, we want to recognize this side went first. So look what I'm going to do. I have my collar and sleeve. He steps up, and he keeps going, and I drop right here as he goes for that second one. It's turning me a little this way, foot's on the hip. Second step, I'm going to bring my right knee to my armpit, and third step, I'm going to find that collar and sleeve. So here I am, okay? Let's do this one more time a little faster. But I have to time it right. I have to recognize when he's standing up, I'm losing my closed guard, and I want to update. So the deep collar grip, almost behind the ear, good forefinger cuff grip. He stands up, one, two, I bring my knee in, and here I am. So now I can use my hips a lot and move. This is very traditional on how people play collar and sleeve. However, this space, this elbow and this rib and knee area, if he pulls this arm back, right, he starts getting good posture control. It's hard to fight for the arm. So what we're going to do today I'm going to use my foot on his hip and my hand. I'm going to swing my hips out, punch his arm down, and flare my knee. My goal is to connect knee and elbow and be on my left shoulder, not my back. This makes it harder to play this arm, but that's okay. So right now, if I'm here, the immediate thought is people are like, oh, he's going to pass this way. So go past your right. It's so hard because I'm tucking that arm and have a good hip hitch. If I'm here, now pass. See how it's much harder, or excuse me, much easier for him to move his hips. But when I flare the knee out, and I'm very important tip is I'm punching this hand like I'm putting it in my back pocket. Don't push it up. Push it down to the mat and turn a little bit. So this is where I want to be. Kind of negates this whole side, which means his far side is going to do a lot of stuff. So let's turn this way. First thing we're going to do is an arm bar. This is a quick arm bar. But his options really are here to grip from the top, the outside, the inside, fight for the collar grip or the knee. He's going to fight in this area. First thing he's going to probably fight is that leg. So if he comes in and grips the knee, he wants to keep this away here, right? I can keep fighting, but if his grip's strong, look how I'm going to roll myself. I'm going to bring my knee tight to my armpit. I clamp. I'm behind the elbow here. I kick. I'm going to use that pendulum to come back here. I'm keeping this hand down the whole time. My knees come together, and tap. there's my armbar. So it's very, very quick. So one more time. He's here like this. We'll go a little faster. Look, I swing, catch, come back here. And I'm like this. The reason this works, I can't just go like this. I don't have any leverage. I pull heavy on his collar as I'm pushing on his hip to bring myself here. You can't really see it from this angle, but I'm also punching this arm down. I want to extend him as much as possible. Now I'm bringing this tight to me before I let go of the collar. I come here. Now, even if he's trying to grip, it's hard to hold, right? I'm going to break the grip. But my hand is behind his elbow. And I kick. Look how it comes right there. And I clamp. Now I'm facing this way. All I have to do is use that momentum to circle. From here, I'm pinching. If I let go of this hand, it's very easy for him to posture. Oh, look, right out. So I keep this hand, the sleeve grip punching down. So right here, go ahead and move. I cannot. Like, it's a locked position. I extend my hips. Tap. And there we are. Side note. Let's say as we're fighting here, again, I have this flared knee, and he grips. I come here, and I don't want to do the armbar. He can grip. And come back here and I still have a guard. Okay, so let's go over this whole thing one more time, just the arm bar. It's a fast arm bar, so make sure when you get it, slow down at the end. People have to verbally tap. You have both their hands, sometimes it's hard to tap. So make sure you kind of slow down, and give them the time before you break. Okay. Deep collar and sleeve. He stands up. There's the first hip. Boom, I drop, knee to armpit, extend. Hard to get this elbow here and turn this way. So I'm just gonna keep it up in the air and keep my toes curled on that elbow. But now I use my hips. And I get that flared knee on this side. From here, he brings the arm. And as soon as he's here, I roll. Look, I don't want to reach here. Everybody's going to reach. 
roll and pull tight to you. Now I reach. Extend, come back around, hinge the knees, tap, and there we are. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is actually the near side arm bars. Let's go back down, same thing. It's gonna be the same mechanics. We're just gonna rotate this way. So, same idea, you collar and sleeve, he stands up. This is kind of a good way to enter it. Boom, I'm here, I'm strong. Right now, he wants to pull this back over. Maybe he grips my collar, my lapel. As he's here, look, I'm gonna turn. See how it's already behind the hip? I pinch here. It's hard to get this finished sometimes. So if I'm here, I'm like, don't have it. Look at my thumb. I'm not gonna let go of this grip. I'm gonna grip here and then get the tap. So you can see that my leg, or sometimes I may get lucky and get it this deep, but my leg is the fulcrum here. My knee, I'm driving as much as I can. Look, how I lift my hips up behind here, and I just need some pressure here. One more time, we'll stay up in this position, give me a break. I'm here like this, or even if I'm playing like this, don't have the wrist on your hip. I almost want to encourage a little bit of turn, and now I'm using my far foot. Knees come here, there's the tap. If he drives it forward, it actually makes it even easier, okay? So just the near side and the far side of bar. We're gonna spend the rest of the lesson though working on the omoplata. I really like this entry into the omoplata with this collar grip. So a little different than a typical collar and sleeve. But we have the arm bar one side, arm bar the other side, or we're gonna hit this omoplata to the, to the finish. So move this way a little bit. Same idea, I'm here, maybe I'm fighting for my usual collar and sleeve, he starts standing up. I feel I'm going, yes, boom, one, two. Side note, as he comes up, even if he's gripping my leg, like holding it as he's coming up, I can still move, right? And then get my foot on the inside. And that's easy to start controlling him. So typical collar and sleeve, I'm gonna shift and come here. So I'm punching the hand down, watching this connection. The closer his elbow is to the knee, the better for me. So right now, I'm kind of on a funny angle to him, right? I'm not squared up. If he turns into me, what I can do is extend this foot, turn, and look, I'm gonna wait until my knee is behind his elbow. I'm using my right foot, I'm gonna pull heavy, and I'm gonna turn, or turn to my own foot. And that collar grip forces him down. It's really hard to stand with posture. My left hand stays tucked, and the collar grip is tight until he's down. Now I'm gonna sit up. As I sit, if it's hard here, don't try to turn into him. Sit this way away from him. Look how I'm punching. Turn back in. Now I find the hip and set my ankle. So from here, I'm parallel. Notice he's still on hands and knees. Gonna make an easy finish for this. Very crucial detail. I'm not gonna S my legs here. This is super awkward for my hips. I'm gonna use this foot all the way back. Now I'm good. Look at how his shoulder's off the mat. This is why it's a good finish. I'm just gonna lift, make him carry all my weight. Okay, let's do this a little faster so it can be a little smoother. This way, sir. Good collar and sleeve. He stands up. Boom. One, two, and look how I'm already here. If he starts squaring up, now look, I can lift my hips to get some weight and I'm pushing down, extend my foot, and here I am. From here, I come up and then set my angle. So you can see how I kind of roll away and then pull back. A lot of people watching this video say, why won't he forward roll? He will. But for this, now if he stays here, I'm good. I just have to set my foot. So I'll bring this foot in or you can even pull it. Now my angle is good for my knees. And I just sit up. There's the tap. If he does roll away, so you can just start standing if you want. Let's move to this side a little bit. This is different than a normal oval plot, and I'll go over that in a second. But when I'm here like this, even if he stays where he is, I can choose to turn. Look how I'm here and extend. Look how my knee is past. I rotate externally, and then I want to keep my calf really tight to his ribs. So I extend it, turn, and then I roll. Right now, he rolls away. As it goes, boom, right here. I'm going to come up with him. Look how I didn't lose this grip. I'm going to use this hand on the elbow and my feet to his far hip. Now this hand here, I'll take the arm bar. Let's do this a little faster. We'll do the whole sequence nice and smooth so you can see how it kind of works. Matt feels the old plot coming and he rolls right away. I have collar and sleeve. Boom, he stands up. One, two, I'm here. I turn, I extend. As he goes, boom, I come up with him and I'm right there. So I have to expect he's going to roll. I don't have anything controlling his hip or his leg to stop him from that four roll. It's a very common reaction. If I don't want to go to the armbar, I can come right up into side control. Let's show that one time too. Okay, if I just want the sweep, right? So you can start from standing. Make sure, side detail or small, small detail, make sure this is up high. Mm -hmm. Higher the better for you. 
But here I am, I get my collar and sleeve, I flare my knee, maybe I pull here. I like to lift my hips a little bit because then it allows a little bit of movement. As he rolls, boom, right here, I come up with him. Now I don't need this anymore, so I'm testing my legs. I'm gonna use this far arm. Look how I'm coming right in here, okay? So if you find that like, hey, they're rolling all the time, great, fall and get the sweep. It's a good sweep. The difference between a typical collar and sleeve on a plata is that I have to shoot really high for a regular one, right? And pull them down. Because I hit this collar and that knee flare, they're much lower. So the different grip makes it easier for them to roll, but I don't have control of the leg. However, I'm not fighting so hard to get them to roll. So the sweep's easier, if that makes sense. Let me show you a traditional kind of omoplata from closed guard and show you why the grips are different. So if we're here in closed guard, I might come across for a pistol grip, cross, cross grip here. I can use this foot to handle him or on his hip, I dive under. Look, I'm behind here, boom. So now I have a cross grip and leg control. So go ahead and roll. I cannot, can't step over me, etc. And I can update from there. But the grips we're having, I have this tight here. And instead of a pistol grip or a sleeve grip, I have a four finger cuff grip and the collar. When I let go of the collar, there's nothing controlling. So he's gonna roll. So as he rolls, I just go with him and I fight that control. So let's do all these as a quick finish, but there are more. Can you get a triangle from here? Can I fight for collar chokes? For sure. Um, but this idea of near side, far side arm bars, I like are very effective because it kind of extends them. And as they try to turn their angle, it sets up the own plot. So we'll go through all three and wrap up the video. So close guard. First one, we do far side armbar. I get my deep collar grip, my sleeve, he stands up. Boom, I drop, I come here, get my foot on the bicep first. I turn and I get heavy on this knee flare, right? He starts coming underneath and gripping. I rotate, pull to me, get my grip, come back in, everything's tight, okay? Second time, maybe instead of fighting for this far side leg, a lot of times it's hard to come underneath with this arm, they tend to drive forward Right, like yes, and he's pulling that elbow there. So now I'm gonna turn and get this grip, tap, and there I am, okay? It's very shallow, this is like that shock and arm bar. The more I can rotate this way, the better, but if he flares his shoulder up, I'm also set up right in my own plata, and whether he rolls or I finish, I'm good to go. So that attacking of the arm system kind of works very well chaining together. So try these out, hope they work. Let me know in the comments what you think, if you have any questions, love to hear them. Thank you, guys.